Yo, what's good, my beautiful people? We are back. Sisters, it seemed like it took forever. It seemed like it was forever. I missed y'all. I missed y'all. I tried to give y'all some videos, you know, during the interim of them being out, wait for them to come back on from their mid-season finale. But they're back. I want to say congratulations to Tyler Perry, Ebony Obsidian, KJ Smith, Novi Brown, Manon, and the entire cast and crew of Sisters for being renewed for a third season on BET. That is huge. It's big, especially, you know, a show that centers around and encompasses the daily ins and outs of beautiful and handsome chocolate people on television. We don't see that much. And the fact that they are doing such incredible things and they don't have a quote-unquote um, A-lister on the show, according to, you know, Hollywood. But we don't give a damn about Hollywood. We got our own black situation going on, and I'm and I'm loving it. And I'm here for it, and I wish them all the success, and I am happy about that. So now that we're done with that, uh, let me say I took some medicine uh, before I got to the studio. So I may curse a little bit more today. Um, we're just going to see what happens. But, you know, if I do, forgive me. And y'all just continue to ride with me like y'all been doing. And I appreciate you, and thank you for all the new subscribers. It's a blessing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for commenting regardless of your, your viewpoint. I welcome it comment all that good stuff and y'all know how I do I'm gonna get right into it now I'm gonna be skipping maybe today I don't know but you know y'all just follow me um do a little skipperization ain't nothing wrong with that so we're gonna start with my dog my ace my favorite sister Karen I'm getting in Karen's ass today so um <laughs> so just so y'all know like I've said many times before I'm not biased so today you really gonna see because we getting up in Karen ass because she did some trifling hood rat stuff on last night's episode of sisters season two episode 13 entitled let it be so i have many 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 thoughts about this whole credit card situation and for those who watched the conspiracy video that i did about it so okay so when the show opens up when i opens up because they were all in the bank i'm gonna get to that part later but the um the second time we see karen she's walking into her shop and pam greets her with mail and basically pam has already opened the mail which is not an outlandish thing because she, she is the receptionist and they tend to do that so she's basically telling karen that she you know that she apologizes for having to give her this bad news or this news as she starts her day and we find out that it's actually Karen's business credit card that has been charged, not her personal credit card. So for me, that one fact alone changed my perspective a little bit because it instantly put the spotlight on Pam. Even though I don't believe Pam did it, it just makes her look more suspicious because Pam would have access to Karen's business credit card because normally your receptionist or your secretary or your assistant, however you name them, they have access to that. And they're normally the ones who make the purchasing for the business or company. So it's not outlandish that people suspected Pam. Like I stated, even though I don't believe that she did it, it definitely puts her in the spotlight of being a possible suspect of this situation. I still do not count Zach out, even though we're going to get to that whole situation. He looks very innocent. He he probably did not do it. However, you have a lot of people stating, well, how would he get the credit card? Why would he steal Karen's credit card? And he didn't have to steal Karen's credit card. Um, I have two credit cards, and I don't know if all companies do it, but I know with mine I do have a personal and I have a business uh, card. And so what they will do, they will ask you, if you would like to add a user and what happens is if you say yes and you put that user's name it gives them a card of their own it's on your account but it has their name on it and when you use it it's gonna have that person name on it but it's gonna come on your statement and so I basically believe that's what happened with this whole credit card situation that Karen allowed Zach to have a card on her account because she did not, and even when she went to him, it wasn't a far-fetched thing to believe that he did this. So it lets me know he must have had access to her card. So we'll get to that, like I said it a little earlier. However, we find, there are some missing pieces. The one thing that Tyler did reveal was that the total was $5,900. That's how much had been used on her card. And I'm like, 
it let me know a lot of things. One, it let me know that Karen is not on top of her shit as a businesswoman because there is no way I have a business and my personal stuff. We have online banking. Most people who deal with money, who have their money in banks and credit unions and you have a credit card, you have online banking. I am a person who checks my stuff very often. So it amazes me that someone was able to make multiple purchases that equated to be $5,900 and Karen not know about it. So that lets me know, baby, when it comes to your business, you very lax, Karen. You ain't doing a good job running your business efficiently. So, and I think that really dispels even the, the notion that Aaron used her card to bail out Gary. I don't know if y'all heard that, but that has been like a major thing that, yeah, Aaron used her card to bail out Gary. Hypothetically, let's say he did. Even if he did, it wouldn't be on the statement that she received. Because when you're dealing with credit card or any other money of that matter, it's always the previous billing cycle that you're getting the statement for. So it wouldn't even be on it. So it dispels that. So right now, and this is what I think going to happen, and I really hope I'm wrong. I honestly believe that this storyline was written so that we could see the situation with Aaron, excuse me, with Zach and Karen, that they would have a reason to communicate because they have not communicated or seen each other since the hotel situation. So that in itself, I like, I feel like it's going to be like something that is pushed up only for us to be disappointed when, when the revelation of this comes out, because honestly, personally for me, it's not a strong enough storyline to really capture the attention. We just want to know who did it. Other than that, it's like, what else can happen with that? So that's my viewpoint on that situation. But we're going to come back to, we're going to come back to Karen and, you know, that whole situation. She instantly believed it was Zach. Now, this this is the other issue that let me know about Karen. Karen is very impulsive when it comes to Zach. I understand that Pam told her she called to confirm and they told her that it was indeed Zachary Taylor. I don't care what anybody tell me. I think one of the worst things you could do to somebody is accuse them without having adequate proof. Yes, I do know that the statement was proof and all that other good stuff, but just to call to get information for yourself. So you can't say, yeah, well, Pam told me that they said, no, 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 no. I need to hear. Do you guys have footage? Can I see the person who did this? It would have been so many steps I went to before I even stepped to Zach. So I didn't like that whole, I think she did a very poor job as to getting the facts before she go and accuse someone. Because for me, accusing me of something is one of the worst things anybody could do. Ask me first, regardless of how bad it is, I'm going to tell you the truth, but the worst thing you could do is accuse me of something that I have not done. So we're going to move along. We're going <laughs> to move along to Hayden and Fatima. Y'all, I laughed so hard during this scene. Because Hayden has so much confidence. I'm like, nigga, you sitting up here looking like a little busy ant. I don't even know. I mean, he's not an ugly dude. But I'm just looking at him when he was, you know, talking his big big boy stuff. You know, you got the perfect person standing right in front of you. And you and you don't want it. And you this. I'm the best thing for you. I said, what? I said, Fatima, you do a good job, sis at uh, coming off as this big boss, even though I don't believe it. But you do talk a good game. I'm like, please tell this dude that his dick game is first-degree trash. Just let him know. Just because that's what you told Zach is, you know, you didn't like the sex with him. Just tell him it's trash. Let this brother move on because, you know, you hit a man below the belt like that. What what they going to do? You can't redeem yourself for being trash in bed. It, it just is what it is. And since that's what Fatima said, Sis, go ahead and put him out of his misery. Tell him he ain't working with what he think he working with. Tell him he ain't got the moves like he think he got the moves. It's always the man with the worst stroke game who got the most confidence in the world. I just had a flashback of a horrible experience. And, you know, he this dude talked himself up so well. And I normally don't get moved by words like that, but he, he had a real good smooth talk game. And it was such a disappointment, y'all. It was it was a waste of a number. I could have kept that number and used it on somebody else. It just wasn't good. It just wasn't good. But that, it was a very small scene with Hayden and Fatima. You know, basically she was just saying that she, you know, she's always dating somebody. 
And Hayden was like, you know, well, that's the problem. And I don't know. It seems as if last night Fatima made it very clear that she doesn't want him in any way. I still think she kind of beats around the bush and not she's not explicitly clear about where she stands, really. And I think that um, skipping ahead of myself with Miss Irene, she was like, don't be sorry, be clear. And I think that was that should have been the theme of the show last night. Like, don't be sorry, be clear. We need to know exactly what's going on, lay it out there. So I did like what Miss Irene said. It hit me like, yeah, you got to be clear. You got to be crystal clear when you're dealing with someone's feelings. So I did enjoy that. Now, y'all know um, this scene was – I think I went back and looked at it. This scene was like almost three minutes. This scene with Zach and Fatima pissed me the hell off because it was entirely too long. I'm like, Zach up here hemming and hawing about this thing with Hayden. Did he threaten you? Did he do? And, and you know, I know a lot of people really like hate, uh, really like Fatima and Zach together. But the more and more I look at them, it's like a mother disciplining her child. It, it just, it comes off very milfish <laughs> to me it comes off real like mom and stepson vibe I don't know it's just weird because she's always kind of like pulling something out of him pulling him to talk pulling him and and that is for me is that is annoying to watch a grown woman do that it took literally three minutes for for Zach to come on and say what happened I just got really like um uninterested in that scene very quickly I so I'm, I don't have much to say about it you know, it was just entirely too long. Like, just tell this woman the truth. Yes, this is what he said. I understood him telling Fatima that he didn't want her to do anything because he didn't want to jeopardize his opportunity. And Fatima, you know, I'm not going to say anything. You're not going to kick out of the group, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yet, and still, you don't know what Hayden does with his time when he's not at work. And someone messaged me about Hayden. It was asking, like, why do I believe that Tyler suddenly changed his character? Like when he was first introduced, you know, the young lady thought like he's going to be this good character and so on and so forth. Yet he's not what she expected. And so from my perspective, I don't think that Tyler changed him at all. I think that Hayden is a great lawyer when he was helping Andy telling her what needed to be done in order for her to win her case. Great at his job, but he's, he's a straight up jackass. So that has nothing to do with him personally. It's just like Andy. Andy is an amazing lawyer. But when it comes to her personal life, she jacked the hell up. You know, so sometimes your profession, and you can have a profession where people respect you and revere you, yet in real life, and, you know, outside of that, you could be a straight-up lunatic, asshole, jackass, ignorant son of a you-know-what. But it doesn't have anything to do with how efficient and effective you are at your job. And that's just how I view Hayden. Good at his job, but Jack is outside his job. Um, so let's go to Maurice and Jacoby. Maurice has become extremely exhausting for me. I know that he's funny. I know that he's supposed to be the comedic relief in the show. His humor is funny sometimes. I can't deny that. But last night, I don't, this, this disrespectful mess, and it, it's just really like, um, it's really unbecoming, and it's very turn offish for me as, as, a, as a viewer. I don't know any man that would allow another man to call him a bitch and he not do anything. He didn't even blink twice. Jacoby, I, I was like, you know, Maurice is really begging for Jacoby to get in his ass and not the way he wants Jacoby to. Because I'm like, there's just no way for him to be consistently disrespectful, for him to be consistently out, out of line with saying some of the things he has said to Jacoby. It is so, I mean, I'm shocked that Jacoby has not come, have not gone off on him. Because I'm thinking to myself, you've been disrespectful to this man the moment he appeared, and for no valid reason other than Maurice has created this mindset or this situation in his mind that Jacoby is there to take his job. And I'm like, even if he was, what you're doing is not warranted, and Maurice is so unprofessional at work. Just, Jesus, it's just getting to the point that I'm not even liking Maurice's character anymore. 
just simply because, and I'm like, Tyler, I, I know a lot of gay men, okay? I know a lot of gay men. I don't know one personally who acts like Maurice. Not nan one. Not saying they ain't not duh. I don't know any of them that act like that. He's he's too much. He's team too much for me. He, he just really is. So he tells Jacoby that he's acting like Alonzo. I was like, well, damn, that's a <laughs> that's a that ain't even a slap in the face. That's a jump kick in the face. Cause I'm like, you don't even know Alonzo other than the disrespect that he has shown Maurice. There is nothing about Jacoby that has demonstrated any of those things that Alonzo stands for. Now, everybody got on everybody on the show got on my nerves last night. So I'm not excluding anybody. Everybody touched the nerve. Everyone. So Jacoby, I really like Jacoby, but I'm like, Jacoby, how the hell you ain't know uh Maurice was gay? Because of his size, because he's a big dude. What does that have to do with anything? So I'm like, yes, that did show his ignorance. And I'm just I'm just sitting there shaking my head like, really? Really, Tyler? I, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say nothing because I'm trying not to be critical. <laughs> so I'm not going to say nothing with that. And I ain't, I'm not going to give y'all what I scored this episode until I'm done because I don't want y'all to, you know, to, to end this video. <laughs> so I want y'all to listen to it in its entirety. So Calvin comes to the bank. Calvin comes to the bank because he needs to return the master key back to Maurice. So as he goes to leave, Maurice smells him. Calvin has on Maurice's perfume so that means you had to go in this man's room get his perfume and put it on that's a no-no I I understood Maurice when it came to don't go through my stuff why you why you even got that close to my vicinity of my of my space and my room to even have my perfume on like don't go through my stuff I'm a firm believer that I, I I have a real issue with that I don't mind people looking at stuff but ask me first and let me tell you yes or no don't take it upon yourself to go and touch anything that belongs to me. That is a huge pet peeve. It's almost like an invasion of privacy. I, I have an issue with that. So I understood where Maurice was coming from. So Calvin was basically acting like he didn't care about Sabrina and all of this mess like that. So when he turns around and he sees Jacoby in Sabrina's office, he's like, hey, who, who that? He's the newest employee, um, Maurice said. And you can see the jealousy. You can see the, hmm on Calvin's face, but I'm like, no, 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 bruh, calm that down, because then you just have a chick in your bed, you was ready to do any and everything with, and the only reason why you couldn't, because your head, your big head and your little head wasn't vibing, the, the connection wasn't going on, so you couldn't get it up, you just had a chick in your bed, now you want to trip out, because you see a, another man showing an interest, or the hell, they were just talking at that point, but I'm like, yeah, nah, calm that down, double standards, this show, and I think Tyler does a great job at presenting that, even with women, because we will view one thing as a as a great thing, and then the other thing is like, nah, she a hoe for that, and she ain't even slept with somebody. It's, it's just crazy how we have our own judgments and, and, you know, how we view certain things and how we give men a pass, but we are so hard on the women, or vice versa for some, for some things. Andy, oh, my God, KJ, if you listening, you know I love you. <laughs> but Andy, Andy, I think Andy got on my nerves the most last night episode because Andy has a nasty attitude, and she has a horrible disposition when she's going through her personal things. She takes her personal issues and shortcomings, and she lets them manifest at work. And that's something I never understood like, you leave my boss, when I was working a long time ago, he used to always say, the CEO of the company, you leave your mess, your personal troubles, your the arguments you had with your spouse, whatever you got going on, you leave that in your car. When you come up in here, it should be no remnant of what you're dealing with personally. And Andy does a poor job with that. You can always tell she's going through something. I did. I dislike you invited Fatima to hang out with you and your girls to get to know you and your girls better. Just the next day, you pop up at work. You don't even say good morning to this woman. Andy goes into Fatima's office. I need those files for whatever she needed the files for. Didn't say good morning. You could tell Fatima was excited, trying to make small talk. Oh, you look good, girl, and blah, blah, blah. And Andy just kind of threw her off. Yeah, can you just get those files for me? And she was like, you know, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. And she just walks the hell out. Then she gets in her office, and who's there? Miss Irene, who I like her. She get on my nerves, but I love her. 
basically, you know, Miss Irene just be reading her like a book. Basically, that's all it is, telling her the truth, and Andy don't want to hear it. So basically, with that situation, you know, Miss Irene was asking her, what was wrong? Are you in love? Yes. Is that so hard for everybody to understand? I'm like, no, nigga, we understand. It's the fact that you in love with a married man. It's the fact that you gave this man when you met him six months to get a divorce, and he hasn't. It's the fact that this man had put money in your account, got your stuff seized, you couldn't go into your apartment, you lost all your money, you had to, it's a lot, Andy. It's a lot. And I was like, I really hope and pray that this season does not revolve around everybody kissing Andy's ass, trying to make her feel better for the poor ass decisions that she's made in her life. Because that going to the bank scene, I was trying to wait till I got to Andy going to the bank scene, and then I'm um, uh, Karen telling her I'm sorry. What you sorry for? At first, you were the one making sense. You were the one who sat down that bed, cried with your girlfriend when she told you that this man basically tried to choke the living life out of her, or hug the living life out of her. You were so gung ho, straightforward to the point, standing still on your own firm foundation. Now you telling Andy you sorry? Sorry for what? Hell no, we ain't sorry. Now I got to, you know. <laughs> normally I have an issue with Danny. Sometimes, the only thing I have with Danny is because Danny can dish it out, but Danny can't take it. That's the only issue I I don't have a problem with Danny saying majority of the stuff that she says. But when it's reciprocated back to her, Danny gets very offended with the truth, yet she doesn't mind sifting and, and offering out to somebody else. And Danny doesn't always have the best delivery. I do believe that majority of her stuff comes from a loving place. It's just sometimes, you know, her delivery is is horrible, is jacked up. It, it is what it is. But when she tried to speak to Andy about let's not forget these other things that you you know that you've gone through we want to make sure that you understand that a man treating you like that doesn't deserve to have any part of you she was making sense Shh, don't you got to go to work and I, I was like oh my god here we go again can we you know I love the show but Tyler does some repetitive things that <laughs> get on my damn nerves and that's one of them I, I that hush hush and Danny don't, don't get me wrong. Sometimes Danny do do need to hush, but it becomes repetitive to the to the point that it's it's almost it, it's insulting. You know what I'm saying? It's insulting, and I and I don't like that. But I just didn't understand Sabrina and Karen's pampering Andy on her ass about this jacked up position that she put herself in. She's known the whole time that Gary was married. Why I'm not feel sorry for you? Not for that. No one deserves to be abused by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't feel bad that this is happening as far as the disconnect with her and Gary. But anyway, back to back to Andy. So Miss Irene dropped a jewel. Um Miss Irene told her that, you know, it's okay to love him. It's okay you can love it but not need it. And when you get to that place that is some true maturity, True maturity, because that's how I feel about Karen and Zach. They are one of probably the most toxic ass relationship on the show. They are so toxic. I hate. I, I literally hate them together. So let's let's deal with that. So Karen comes to the um the airport after Zach has blocked her. He won't pick up the phone for her. So she gets to the airport. Danny escorts her to where he is. Basically, that whole scene was so like, oh my god cringy not in a bad way it was just like you're we were we're obviously watching two people who definitely love each other who are not in love anymore they are not I'm gonna I'm not gonna say they're not mature enough they haven't effectively dealt with the jacked up shit that they done did to each other so we find out you know when she approaches him Zach is basically telling her he doesn't know what she's talking about regarding these charges she doesn't know I mean excuse me he doesn't know and she was like you know Zach I know you did it my thing is, nigga, where's the proof? You coming in here saying, I know you did it. I need to see. I'm going to call the police. You got two choices. Either run me my money or I'm calling the police. You going to call the police on me. You going to call the police on me. Bad. <laughs> the, I love the vow. Okay. Okay. I love the vow. But let me just say, I ain't seen one tear drop out his eye yet. But he do that crap. He do. You going to call the cops on me? That's what we doing. That's how we going to do that. You going to say that to me? 
he don't never cry. Somebody told me something, oh, my God, did y'all cry along with Zach? I'm like, Zach didn't cry. Hell, anybody could do that. Y'all hear how I just did it. So that's what you're going to do to me, Cameron? you going to call the cops on me? I ain't crying. Hell, that didn't take much. <laughs> but I just want to see one tear at least during this season. Can we please see one tear roll out that nigga eyes? Please. Just one. But anyway, it was jacked up. He said some jacked up stuff, especially when he said, I should have just let you die. She did some jacked up stuff when she talking about she put his uh the, his grandfather stuff in a box outside. And he was like, you know, you know, that's all I had of him. That was foul as hell because Karen had already made up in her mind that that's what she was going to do before she even approached Jack, Zach, talked to Zach, all of that. And I was like, baby girl, <laughs> let me tell you something. Fortunately and unfortunately, it's like a catch-22. I had amazing grandparents. My grandparents lived six houses away from each other, so that let y'all know what my what my parents were doing. But I had the opportunity to grow with them. My first, uh, the when I lost my first grandparent, I was 16. The, then I was 21. And then I was 26 when I lost the last two, 30 days apart. There is something so special about the love and relationship that you have with your grandparent when you have amazing grandparents. And I was blessed to have four. And to lose them is a hurt I can't even explain. So when Karen did, there was something that happened within me because I was like, if I was a dude in real life, if I was a man and somebody did that, you know, and I'm dating a woman or whomever, my ex, and she did that to anything my grandparents left me, I would have been in prison because I'm going to beat your ass. Like, that was something that I was like, wow, Karen, you really did that, sis, like that. That was just a low blow. That was a very low blow. I'm not excusing anything that Zach said or did. But that there, mm-mm. I said, I was like, Lord, just leave them. Let them leave each other alone. Tyler, please don't put them together at this point. And anybody who has been following me since I have been doing the reviews of Star, you guys know that I hate any scene where a man put his hands on a woman and where a woman put her hands on a man. Keep your hands to yourself. That's one thing that I despise. So I hate the fact that Karen put her hands on him. And I know that some people are like, yeah, he deserved that. He, I get you. I get you, sis. I get you, bro. If you feel that way, I just hate seeing that because I don't feel a man should be, no hands should be put on him either. That's just how I feel personally. But that scene was just something. And then once, you know, Zach walked away, um, and they keep saying, you know, because we done. I'm like, damn it, we know y'all done. Please stop saying that. Tyler, please stop writing that. They done. We know. Jesus Christ, it gets on my nerves. And then so he leaves. So it's just Karen and and, and Danny. And Danny was like, you know, do, baby, like, do you really, really know that was him? And she was like, Danny, can you please be on my side for once? For once. And Danny was like, Karen, I'm always on your side. Uh, lies. But this is not the video for me to go into that. But that was a... Bull face lie right there, Danny, but I'm going to let you have that because I ain't got the time to go deep right now with that stuff. So, Danny and these two country-ass, hillbilly, dirty-looking men, you know, I said, first of all, the, she a black what? <laughs> then it's two of y'all, and you that's the fence right there. It's two men who are, who's approaching this one woman while she's at work. I'm like, how the hell y'all know where she worked? Did Preston tell y'all what? How, what? That was alarming. That was like, oh, my God, these two idiots now showed up at this girl's job threatening her to stay away from their baby brother because they don't want her, you know, uh, what, I don't know what they said, um, uh, messing up their bloodline or something like that. And I said, baby, y'all bloodline already messed up. What happened to y'all? What happened to y'all? Tyler, uh, Tyler, <laughs> I don't know where Tyler found these dudes at, but he did an amazing job because, baby, they look like, darn, they look real KKK-ish. I'm going to just put it that way. They look real KKK-ish. So I'm just like, wow. I mean, it was a way to end the show, I got to admit. It was a way to end the show. All right, so the grade I give this show for those who still listening, I gave it a 6 out of 10. I... My ex and not because my expectations weren't met. I just really thought that when you know coming back from a mid season finale, this would be the show would have been more exciting. Certain things would have had. I, don't get me wrong. The scene between Zach and Karen was very dramatic, very 
um, heartstring pulling and things of that nature. But I just expected a little bit more than what was given. Some scenes were extremely dragged out, and I know that that is Tyler's style of writing, but it can get pretty uh, boring after a while, and there is no excitement to that scene. Um, I think I hit on everything. I think that was it. Um, let me address this because some there's this guy. I think he. I think it's a guy. Sometimes you don't know on YouTube, but I think there's this guy. He was like, you know, your reviews are entirely too long, and I'm like, baby, damn it, you ain't got to listen. But I do appreciate everyone who listens. It's just that the way that I review, I like to give thorough reviews. I like to really interject some personal experiences because I don't, I can't see y'all. You know what I'm saying? So I know that I like to be entertained. And being thorough and adding some extra stuff to it, that's just what I like to do. I ain't changing the way I do stuff. If it's too long, listen to it in increments. Listen to the first 10 minutes, then the next five, then the next. You know, you can do it that way. But, you know, I have nothing wrong with you express, expressing yourself, but I'm not going to change what I do to fit one person. So I thank you guys for listening. I thank you guys for, you know, your continued support. If I missed anything, let me know. I don't think I did. I tried to hit on everything. I think I hit on everything. I don't know, but hopefully I did. And, uh, you know, I'm going to holler at y'all next week. Y'all be safe out there. Until next time. What?